This unit of study is going to be looking at similarity, and similarity is based on the concept of ratios and proportions. So let's begin there. For starters, what is a ratio? Well, a ratio is a comparison of two items by division. Now, when we do have a ratio, it's common, or actually it's needed, to have everything being in the same types of units. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of uh, swap over and change in order to get that to work out. Now, if we have two items, A and B, and we want to write ratios, there are three accepted methods. We can write as a normal fraction, A over B. We can write it in sentence form, where we have A to B. Or we can actually use words and say A to B. And each of these means the same thing. We have an item A, we're comparing it to item B. For instance, let's take a look at this example. A bonsai tree is 18 inches wide and 2 feet tall. What is the ratio of width to height? Now when we do this, the order that items are asked in, width to height, is very important because a comparison of A to B is not the same as saying B to A. So what we need to do is put everything in the same types of units. Since 18 inches is not a set amount of height, uh, set amount of feet, or an integer amount of feet. Let's convert the two feet into inches. So two feet, where each foot is 12 inches, is the same as saying 24 inches. So if we do a comparison of the width to the height, our width is 18. Our height is 24. Now we need to take this and reduce our fraction. So each of these numbers can be divided by 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So the ratio in reduced form of width to height is 3 to 4. And we'll be able to do a lot of work with this, and there should be a major review from back concepts learned in very early grades uh, when you're first introduced to fractions. So let's take a look at another example where we can use this and then expand upon it into another concept. So here I have a set of angles. They are supplementary. They form a linear pair. And I'm going to tell you that the ratio of these is 1 to 4, meaning that angle 4, I'm sorry, angle B is 4 times the size of angle A. Now since we don't know what each one is, we assign a variable to those ratio numbers. So 1 to 4 becomes 1x and 4x. Now they form a supplementary pair, which means that the sum of these has to be 180 degrees. Now we have an equation that we can solve to find the size of each of the angles. 1x plus 4x is 5x and that equals 180 degrees. Dividing both sides by 5 using our division property of equality we come out with x equaling 36 degrees. So angle A is 36 degrees. Angle B is 4 times that at a total of 144 degrees. So this is how we can work when we have just two pieces is using a ratio. But there is a concept called the extended ratio. An extended ratio, a ratio that involves three or more items being compared. So if we have this triangle that is shown, we can make an extended ratio by saying that the ratio of the sides is 4 to 7 to 9 and if we're given the fact that the perimeter is equal to 60 centimeters we'll be able to use our ratios and the same concept we had above in order to calculate the length of each side. So we're going to say that the short side here is 4x the medium side is 7x, and the long side is 9x. 
Now we can go through and solve for x and then find the length of each side. Because perimeter is simply the sum of all the sides. So 4x plus 7x plus 9x is equal to 60 centimeters. Combining our like terms, 4 plus 7 is 16 plus, sorry, 9 plus 7 is 16 plus 4 is 20. So we have 20x equals 60. Using our division property of equality, dividing both sides by 20, we come out with x equals 3. So if x equals 3, going through and replacing our values, 4 times 3 is 12 centimeters, 7 times 3 is 21 centimeters, and 9 times 3 is 27 centimeters. So our extended ratios allow us to do more comparisons, and we could even project this out to quadrilaterals, pentagons, or other shapes, as long as we have that common unit, in this case centimeters, that everything's being compared to. Now with our ratios, and with proportion, uh, with ratios, we also get another concept called proportions. So let's take a look at those for a minute. Proportions, simply stated, are an equation of two equal ratios. So any time that you've ever been working with simplifying fractions, you've been working with proportions. So we had that earlier in this lesson. So if I say that 3 6 is the same as 1 half, that is a proportion. It is two ratios that are equivalent to one another. Or if I say from earlier, 18 24ths is the same as 3 fourths, that again is a proportion. And having these proportions up and active will help us to do a comparison when it comes to doing similarities in this unit. Now proportions are based around this idea called the cross product property. This one states, in a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And, of course, the word means, if you have a mean of data, it's the middle value, so means is the middles. Extremes, we're looking at the far outsides. And where this comes from is when we're doing, or when we are writing our ratios, we had all those different options of doing it. Well, if we were to write a proportion that way, we could say A to B equals C to D, our means are going to be the items in the middle. Our extremes will be what's on the outside. So the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Written as in fractionary form, we would have A to B equals C to D, in which case we have the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So when you have two fractions that are set equal, their cross products, multiplying across, diagonally across the equal sign, will be equal. So in the fractions we have above, 6 times 1 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6. 18 times 4 is 72. 3 times 24, how many hours in 3 days, is 72. So our product of our means is equal to our product of our extremes. Let's take a look at a few other examples. What if we had 9, 9 over 2 equaling x over 14? We could use this cross product property to solve for the unknown value. Now going through here, our product of our means, 2 times x, has to equal the product of our extremes, and that's 9 times 14, which is 126. Now dividing both sides by 2 with our division property of equality, we come out with x here being 63. And if we were to go back and look our denominator, we'd multiply it by 7 to get across. New brainer, same thing, 9 times 7 is 63. Taking a look at another one, what if you knew that uh, 3 over m equaled 15 
over m plus 1. This time we're going to have a bit more as we go. Product of our means, we have 15m. Equals the product of our extremes, we have 3 times m plus 1. Using our distributive property, we end up with 15m equals 3m plus 3. Subtracting 3 from each side using our subtraction property of equality, we have 12m equals 3. Division property of equality allows us to have m equals 3 twelfths. Now, applying proportions or simplifying this ratio, we get 1 fourth. So, 3 over 1 fourth is equal to 15 over 1 fourth plus 1. Along with this basic concept of the cross product property, we do have other properties that come into effect when we're dealing with ratios or dealing with proportions. So let's take a look at those to end out this lesson. The basic properties of proportions begin with this. Our simple proportion of A to B equals C to D. Now our first property says that we can take this and we can reciprocate both of these ratios. So this is going to be the same if A over B equals C over D, then, then B over A equals D over C. If we reciprocate both fractions, we come out with an equivalent set. Next, start with our same point, A to B equals C to D. Then going through, we can change, we can swap out our means. So, what we will have is A to C equals B to D. Our next property, again, we're starting back at the same point, A to B equals C to D. And what we get from this one, if we take our denominator of each of the ratios and add it to the numerator, A plus B to B equals C plus D to D. We will still have an equivalent fraction or equivalent ratio. For that one, most people have trouble with that. So if I say 1 half is equal to 2 fourths, this is an accepted proportion. If I add that denominator to each piece, what's 1 plus 2? Well, we'd have 3 halves. Now 4 plus 2 is 6. We end up with 6 fourths. So <coughs> maybe equal sign isn't right here, but if we take all this information and put it together, 1 half, 2 fourths, that's accepted. Now take those denominators, add them to the numerators, 3 halves and 6 fourths, we still have equivalent proportions. So how can we use that with this diagram that is shown here below? Well, let's start taking a look at some. If I start out a proportion by saying 7 fourths, and, when I'm, and I want to know what would be equivalent to that. Well, for starters, where we get the 4? It's right here on our diagram. So what's the equivalent piece to it on the other side? That would be B. Next, how did I get the 7? Well, 7 is 4 plus 3, so this would be equivalent to A plus B. We will have an equivalent proportion, or a valid proportion here. What if I told you that we were starting out with simply 4A? Well, 4A if we were to set these up as fractions real quick, if we went 4 over B equaled 3 over A, 4A is gotten by using our cross products of the extremes. So this would have to be equivalent to the cross multiplication of the mean, which is 3B. Next, what if I gave you the fraction B over equals 
4 over and left those denominators blank. Well, from how we have it set up, we have 4 over b equals 3 over a, but one of our properties up here says that we could swap out our means, and it looks like simply that we had moved this mean of the b up to this location. So all we have to do is move the 3 down there to match, and we end up with 3 and a. So with this, we're able, with these properties of proportions, we're able to work with diagrams and start solving out comparisons of sides. And we're going to be doing this as we move forward, so make sure you have these ideas of ratios and proportions down along with their properties and are ready to use them.